Oke. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see you. I would like to introduce you to our special guest, Mr. Dilip Kumar, uh, known in the community as Gurji. Welcome to our podcast. And we met during one of our Miss Immigrant USA activity uh, activities. Welcome to the Wise Immigrant Podcast. Mr. Gurji, I know you as your Gurji, but your name is Deepak Philip. Can you explain as well how should we refer to you? Where where the names coming from? Yeah, Dilip Kumar is Kumar means a son. Mm -hmm. Dilip is a king's name. That's my name, Dilip Kumar. Mm -hmm. It's usually is come people use in North India, but now people use very well in India. Mm -hmm. And you can see people from Hindu traditions, Christian traditions, Muslim traditions, they all have this Dilip name. Mm -hmm. So Dilip Kumar was a big actor in India. So my dad was an actor, mm -hmm. so he gave that name. And my last name is Tangapen. Tanga means a pure gold and means father. In the father of pure gold. This is my father's first name. So usually we don't call first name. Uh, last name because that is father's name. He's already passed away. Mm. And then people call you Guruji. Can you explain that? Yeah, Guru is a teacher, especially spiritual teacher. Mm -hmm. G means respectable. Oh, okay. so a respectable teacher or a master. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Gurji, for explaining that to our audience. It's, we always are eager to learn new things. And can you please introduce yourself, where you're coming from? What is your immigrant story? Because you are from India, but now you are based in, in the United States. Yeah, I'm originally from South India, the place called Putra, that is the capital of Cochin Kingdom in Kerala state in India. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1999, September 14, I came to New York. Mm -hmm. Last 20, approximately 25 years, I'm living in New York City. Mm -hmm. But I travel to other countries. Uh, as a yoga teacher, I came here to start some classes. Mm -hmm. Then move around to promote international yoga. That was one of my project. Then I promote interfaith gatherings for a long time. I born in an interfaith family. My father is from an Orthodox Christian. They are the first family converted to Christianity from Brahmin Hindu family. And my mom's side is Hindus. They are little this. Mm. So I got advantage as an interfaith movement. You know, that, that's the way I started. Now I'm an interfaith minister mm -hmm. and a trustee of an interfaith seminary in New York City. And um, what, so you grew up with your parents uh, teaching you about spirituality and uh, where you, did you like it? or it just happened naturally because that's who your parents were? And that kind have, of took your life this direction? I had passion to spiritual. We don't think spirituality different from life mm. because our culture is different. Mm. We are family oriented, we are community oriented. We go to any spiritual places. We never think about any religion in those days. We go to any religious place. Nobody bothered. That's the way I grew up. So basically it was part of your of who you were, your your everyday yeah. life. And where the idea came to come to the United States and start the classes of yoga? Uh, in eight, 79, I started my yoga groups in my school. I was training sports children. And then I was very active in sports and games, 25 years, school and college. 
So I had this yoga practice from my childhood. So I start implementing yoga practices with my sports students. Mm-hmm. And slowly I move around, did training programs, promoting uh, yoga. But those days people don't practice yoga. And they think if you go for yoga, that, that means you have some mental problems. So anyway, I made it. So then I thought, just take training programs. Then became very active yoga teacher in India. I was a very, very active artist yoga trainer for yoga teachers. Mm-hmm. Then my students asked me to come to America. So I came for three months, then stayed longer. Then I got a job in a climbing wall. I became an instructor. Within three months, I became a manager. So I kept my yoga classes and rock climbing gyms in the city. So I became popular in the city. Then connecting all of the officials, diplomats at the UN, it was easy for me. Mm. So your first job in the US was to to become an instructor for the climb, climbing school? Climbing wall, yeah, climbing correct. Wall. Mm-hmm. And then you to, on the side, you were starting the yoga classes and then you grew from there. Correct. Well, I kept yoga as my profession mm-hmm. one side mm-hmm. and I kept making money from the climbing wall. Mm. What was the hardest in your in starting the yoga classes and introducing people to the yoga one one was the english accent american accent is different than our accent in india mm. and the prejudice was very high here those days people insult left and right you know harass mm-hmm. it was very really hard for us but you know, i managed very well mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, you have the big heart and it seems like whatever stones people throw at you, you give them back your heart. So it's... Yeah, it take, is, it, take it easy, man. Yes. What was the, your first encounter with the United Nations and how was your journey of, of growing there and making uh, popularis- popularizing, the, popularizing yoga and taking it uh, nationwide and basically worldwide? Because we started the World Yoga Day movement in 1993. My movement for World Yoga was 1987. Then we thought we want to make yoga beyond religion or culture. That is the idea. So 1993 we start our first yoga festival, World Yoga Festival. Mm-hmm. and slowly it became popular. So I brought all the religious people to my event. Mm-hmm. So those days, most of the people practice yoga from Hindu groups. Mm-hmm. So for me, I focus on spirituality more than religion. Okay. So that made a popularity. Then slowly, slowly I brought, including Catholics, you know, Jewish people, Muslims, all come to my events. Mm-hmm. And I, came here, I got advantage. I met Swami, his name is Swami Bua. He was 123 when he passed away in 2010. So I, I saw him when I was a little child. Then he traveled around. He settled in New York. So I saw him. So he asked me, what do you want to do with the yoga project? So I said, I want to do the yoga day. So he brought me to the UN and met the Secretary General of UNN. And he is the first diplomat I met. Wow. So I got advantage. Yeah. I got advantage because Sami was very popular in the, at the UN. And later I became his caretaker. I was taking care of him. So I was living with him on 58th Street West side. My climbing wall was on 62nd West side. It was very close. So I was with him until 2010, then he passed away. Mm. 
then i started two organizations i ran two llc's so i so many friends from media during my climbing world so that gave me a real foundation in new york city mm. meeting all the diplomats all the religious leaders so that was good so i thought okay so i want to continue my earlier work like not okay so i faced out everything and now we are here mm-hmm. so it was really useful that you had a day job where you could make connections mm-hmm. correct and we know that immigrants sometimes they have two jobs three jobs four jobs and then you can take the experiences the connection that you make and apply it to your to to achieve your goals yes yeah and i had a lot of friends from movie field especially bollywood mm. and hollywood yeah. from india from here, here oh, you, in you india. met them here yeah mm. a lot of sports people involved with a lot of gyms Mm-hmm. especially alia club reebok and new york sports club mm-hmm. they all come to make climbing wall so i make a deal with them and we have a lot of companies they give us discount rate items so i order items for my staff and my clients mm-hmm. so we charge only minimum fee so they get a discount yeah. so really good experience so that was a good deal Yeah. Did you convert any of your climbing clients into yoga lovers? Yeah, I had special training programs, for mm. yoga programs for climbers. Mm. And I used to have rock climbing competitions and bring people to Nepal who climb Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. So I made a good relationship with Nepal country and all the political leaders. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, you you've been involved in in a, a lot of activities i see you doing so many different things for so many different organizations from teaching yoga to engaging in global peace initiatives could you please elaborate on your current projects and your daily activities actually what is that you do when you wake up in the morning how do you start your day Yeah, if I wake up, because a lot of time I I am awake, so okay. <laughs> less sleep. That's how it is. Uh, usually, I am active until three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. I'll take a small nap, then start the day. Mm-hmm. So early morning, I'll check my daily schedule, mm-hmm. then start the day. So like a three days in a week, I come to the UN, meet my friends or committee members or some other meetings. Then evenings, I go for public events. Saturday, Sunday, Friday, mm-hmm. other public events. And uh, what are some projects that you are working on now, right now? Currently, we have a project. related with the gene so global ngo executive committee currently and the vp for the association association we are on to do more ngo activities in africa and south america so africa is uh, neglected by so many people you mm. and see a lot of chaos problems in africa We can work on that, mm-hmm. and see interfaith is a major focus for us and peace. There is both will work together. A lot of time people reject religions because they don't like to follow the dogmas. Mm-hmm. But sometimes teachings are needed for people to practice and calm down. Mm-hmm. People pretend they are religious, religious people, but they do all the bad activities. They mistreat people. 
So we want to create a style for religious leaders to be in harmony and take care of people. So that is our one project and we are taking care of a lot of uh, ladies in South America because some people are raped by guys. So we are taking these ladies to be back in normal life. Mm. So I made a organize, three organization and let them turn the show. So usually once in a month I'll talk to them. Mm-hmm. So they will do the work. Pretty good. They do free classes for public in ten cities. They do partnership events with Indian embassy. They have a sports, yoga and sports. A lot of activities are going on. Which countries are the most affected? In Ar- Argentina. Argentina? Wow. Yeah. No, a lot of countries, they have issues. Mm-hmm. So you said you are sleeping three hours a day? Sometimes one hour, sometimes no sleep for days. <laughs> How can you do it? It's a practice. Sometimes I drink only water for seven days. Mm-hmm. Other food. It's part of our training. Through your spiritual journey, when you started from a young age, how how did you develop yourself? How did you work on yourself to grow? And what would you recommend to other immigrants? What they can do for themselves to be better? to grow emotionally, so, especially, and spiritually. When I was three and a half years old, I was in a rental house. And I wanted son to put a fire in the house. So in their building, got fire. Mm-hmm. So 18 trucks came, fire engines came, but they cannot stop the fire because fire went workshop mm-hmm. with all the paint, you know. So that became heavy fire. So everyone left the building. Mm-hmm. The person, owner's wife left in the building, I left in the building. Mm-hmm. She was in the second floor next building, I was in the first floor. And I see the fire all, all over the building. Then my sister remembered and asked my mother, where is the little girl? And she ran into the fire and she got my foot. And pull me up. That's the way I escaped. That was three and a half years old. Then later I always think why he put the fire. Because he wanted to make money out of it. Wanted to get rid of tenants. Mm-hmm. So I put the fire. So I can get insurance. Right? So you see issues in different areas. Wherever we go, we see the issues. So that made me to do more work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we go to church temples for spiritual practice, but it's not going in the day to day life of the people's life. Mm-hmm. We cannot implement godliness in our day to day life. There's no meaning to have this rituals and religious place. So I start focusing on promoting nature lifestyle, focusing on universal spirituality because we all are divine beings on this earth by birth. So we have to figure out the beauty and value of our own birth. And we have to celebrate our each moment, our existence. Mm-hmm. We don't know tomorrow we we'll see. There is no guarantee for life. So that, that's the ideas made me to move around the countries and spend time with people. So a lot of spiritual leaders, they don't take phone calls or they don't talk to normal people. Mm-hmm. For me, you know, I talk to a diplomat or the head of the state or a homeless person the same way. So I try to 
balance my behavior in a common manner. What would you recommend to the immigrants and others who are listening to us? No one is immigrant in this world. What? Oh, no one is immigrant in this world. Yes. We all, we all are just tenants for a little time on this earth. So, but kind of have... immigrants, kind of immigrants. <laughs> No, how come we are immigrant? Because we are part of the universe. We exactly we our soul just Correct. immigrated to the planet Earth. Yeah. No, even planet Earth is beyond the planet Earth. Okay. And the universe is ours, mm. not only really planet Earth. Mm. When we think only planet Earth, mm. we are limited. We have to be universalized. Right? You're right. So we are going to one room to another room. That's it your house. Mm. Yeah. But those who come to one country, we have to learn the language and culture. Mm -hmm. And what is good, we have to take it and implement in our life. What we see is not good, we stay away from it. That's the only thing we can do. It. If you go and argue or fight or insult people, it will make a clash. So better you make friendship. Yeah, try to understand each other. That's the way we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. What were some of the hardest experiences that you had as an immigrant when you came to the United States? The main, main thing is some people don't like immigrants coming to this country. But I didn't understand why they don't like immigrants. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have some uh psychological issues mm -hmm. because if they their grandparents can come to this country we can come too yeah, yeah. So they don't think we are part of the global family mm -hmm. they think we are aliens yeah. because the color difference language different behavior patterns food habits so that they're ignoring that's the way i'll say so we people should understand they are ignorant. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to mistreat them. We have to help them to understand. So we may have to call them for a coffee break. Have a little time with them. So they'll understand. Mm -hmm. What about some positive experiences that kind of surprised you? Oh, I, I remember in 2007, I moved out back to India. Again, I came back. And in that time, I don't have any support from anybody. Mm -hmm. you know, I was away for some months. But a lot of friends helped me. You know, even now, when I ask help, to do it. Some people cannot do it, some people do it. Yeah. So I don't think everybody wants to help. They are not capable to help a lot of time. So we don't have to think negative about them, just think positive. Mm -hmm. We never know how people can help us in different ways. Some some days they will help, some days they cannot. Sometimes another person will help, another time that person cannot. We never know. It all depends upon the uh, flow of the energy in the universe. Somebody will it's my my life experience. If one door is closed, another door will open. Yeah. So you just wait for that. That's very true, and I always think as well this way that even the the negative things that happen to us, they they are just on purpose because something else good is supposed to come to us. Yes. Now when we face a lot of problems, that's the way we grow. Other we don't grow. It's so what? We have problems. Can you repeat? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. When we get problems, we learn how to resolve the problems. So yes. we grow. So then, we, we grow. so then we grow. Correct. Yes, yes. So what are good some. To have, mm -hmm. Good to have good and bad in life. Yes. The, the bed is helping us to grow. 
What are some things in your professional career, which is part of your life, as we know, that you would like to achieve? I'm making plans for achievements, but everything achieved. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, we plan some project resolutions, take time. Mm -hmm. We want to do this year, it won't happen. We'll, we won't never give up. The next year it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And people will see, oh, he's doing a good job, and they'll give some citation, proclamation, or award. Yeah. It's not going to affect me. Because mm -hmm. I want to do something, I'll do it. If I cannot do it, fine. Mm -hmm. I'll move forward. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you plan something and some other things will happen. Yeah. So you never know how actions will happen in your life. Like some scientists want to find, discover something and they discover something else. Mm -hmm. And they get the award for it. You, know? you never know. Yeah. I think we met uh, in person like a year ago. When what was your thought when you first time encountered Miss Immigrant USA? I, I thought why do I have Mr. Immigrant USA? <laughs> <laughs> and now that you met Mr. Immigrant, what Correct. do you think? I'm glad you met some immigrants, Mr. Immigrants. Yes. Yes. So yes. Promoting promoting and uh, encouraging ladies is good, but we have to think male need attention to, you know. This should be hand in hand. Someday we became feminists and they create fight between females and males. That is not good. So we have to teach people how to respect each other, how to work together. That's important. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was always our intention to have as well male. But as you know, it, it it's kind of female dominated industry so you you need to really that, that because of fashion design yeah? as well yeah all the beauty makeup all those things that ladies like yes even presidents and prime ministers put makeup too yes yeah. oh, they have a hairdresser you know <laughs> Yes. Now it's everything is so visual. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. What is the biggest need in the immigrants communities that you see? The main thing is they need a help in all aspects. Mm -hmm. One is the language issue mm -hmm. and place to stay for them in New York City is very expensive and the lack of knowledge about the laws because they have different behavior patterns that is not fit for international community so many times mm -hmm. so we need a training program for immigrants to learn how to behave in the city mm. that is very important yeah. i noticed that as well a lot of immigrants who live in um, like very close communities in Queens or Brooklyn. They even are um, scared, not confident to come to travel Correct. even to Manhattan or to a different borough that they live. Correct. Yes. And because they don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. they, if they don't know how to communicate, it's very hard for them. And they don't know how other people think about them. Sometimes religious, mm -hmm. you know, dogmas or attire, even wearing a cloth itself shows some people don't like certain things. And misunderstandings are there, especially in New York City, you know, over 200 country representatives are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very hard to understand this. Yeah, I see that a lot because when we go with Miss Immigrant to a lot of events and and you know that we go from community to community to community and then we meet the people who never met for example if we go to a chinese community in flashing we meet people who never 
met somebody from Turkey or somebody from Bangladesh or somebody from Poland. And, and like you said, they don't know how to behave. They don't know yes. what to say. And, um, and some, and they're scared. They, they are lacking this kind of they think, they, they think only about their own community or yes. their language. Yes. yes. For them, it's very hard to acknowledge people from other places. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there is um, something that we can do? I do always have... talk to immigration department people. Mm -hmm. They have training programs for these immigrants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, we had to have a cultural exchange programs in schools and college so the children can go to other countries mm. or other communities and learn about yeah. it that is needed these days mm -hmm. yes kind of like maybe traveling taking kids and parents from queen's uh, school to a brooklyn school or from brooklyn Correct. to manhattan kind of traveling Correct. around the five boroughs Correct. when eric adam was the borough president in brooklyn used mm -hmm. to have friendship day parade mm. so we'll ask everyone to bring their own flags and we'll march and we have music program people will bring food mm -hmm. like after covid they didn't restart it like yesterday was the friendship day oh i don't know that's a good that's a great holiday that's a good holiday. see in our events we invite everyone who all comes in. Mm -hmm. We want to differentiate people. Yeah. So my last question, as you are an immigrant, could you share with our audience your immigrant wisdom to empower them, to inspire them? First of all, we have to accept we are not an immigrant in this universe. Okay. But in front of the law and other people, we are immigrants in America. Yes. So never give up, continue your hard work, make your life a better place, mm -hmm. and try to help people, love each other, mm -hmm. and make the social change. You see all the developing goals at the UN, learn about it, try to implement even if you can do a little bit at a time. One step at a time is to never give up. But this is your land. Anybody have a right to come here and live here. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And right. yes, we welcome everyone. We are all immigrants. We are all human yeah. beings. Right. And yeah. we should be sharing love right. with each other despite any issues, color, religion. We are all one. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are here to help everyone. Yes. Thank you, Gurji. Thank you. And okay. till the next time. See you Hopefully then. soon.